Hi folks, this is Mohan Dagavan. So today we are going to start Novice Machine Learning in Tune project. So till now we have seen different kinds of mathematical concepts and the theory concepts of the machine learning. So it's a time to jump into the machine learning in Tune project. For checking in Tune project, I was looking for a different kinds of books, but I found the hands-on machine learning with Scikit-Learn and TensorFlow book was very useful. So I just took that book. With that book, I'm going to start the in Tune project. So this is the first series and we are going to start with part one, look at the big picture. Before starting, we will see a few points on this book. The best book that has perfect blending theory concepts and more practical with popular libraries such as Scikit-Learn and TensorFlow. And however, you have different kinds of tools like PyCharm, let's say, Notebook, Jupyter Notebook, and different kinds of libraries. And it has step-by-step -step pipelines of ML end-to-end project. And you will come to know a different kind of terminologies that real-time people will use in the machine learning project. And detailed checklist for typical ML project. Let's say if you are picking any ML project, so what should be the best question to be asked before start? And what are the things to be tested? Or what are the things to be checked before starting an ML project? Or in the different stages of ML project? And almost all main topics such as training models, classification, support vector machine, decision trees, ensemble learning, dimensional data reduction with required theory and more practical. And covers neural network and the deep learning as well. And the best book to start with is if you want the book that represents sample of ML concept with practical exclusively. And by using this book, you will come to know different kinds of, uh, let's say, IDEs and the libraries as well. So let's start with end-to-end -end machine learning project flow. So as per this book, these are the different steps has to be followed or better to follow. So first step should be the look at the big picture. So before starting any ML project, so we need to understand what is the business requirement, what is the benefit of this ML project to the business. Next one, get the data. So as you know that ML project mostly relies on the data and the entire prediction or let's say learning will be based on the data what you are getting. So how to get the data and what are the available resources or what are the best resources to get the data for real time? So that will be discussed in the get the data. And discover and visualize the data to get insights. So getting data may be a little time, I mean, little. Uh, sometimes it's easy, but however, we need to find what are the different kinds of insights of the data. Let's say, for example, outliers, or uh, let's say noises. So different kind of areas we need to see, and we need to see how data will distribute over the graph. So for that purpose, we will use the visualization, let's say matplotlib libraries as well. And after that, prepare the data for ML algorithms. Is another way you can say data wrangling. So you will do, let's say, different kinds of data mining activities in the preparing the data. And select a model to train it. So based on the requirement, what would be the best model for our ML algorithm that we will decide. And fine tune your model. It is just like basing your performance criteria, let's say error rate, you will fine tune your model. Especially if you consider ML machine learning. So you will be having the training set and the testing set, data set. So you will be testing with the test data to fine tune your training and present your solution. So whatever you do for the machine learning project, at last you need to present to the customer or the client, right? So that time you will present your solution in a representable way. And after that, let's say the ML project is completed, then the main part comes into picture. So you need to launch that ML project and you need to monitor, keep on. And after that, you need to maintain your system because sometimes what happens is, let's say you are getting the data and it will be keep on learning so you need to feed the data in the future purpose also so for that purpose you need to monitor the data and let's say if you have any different anomalies or let's say if your ml is failing in some places so that time you need to monitor and from that you need to learn again the best example is chart boot so if you consider the chart board, most of the time we will not be getting the proper response. But however, in the backend, they will be getting the responses or let's say the questions which the chart board could not answer that will be recorded. So in future, they will train that model again to, so that the chart board will be responding properly to the any customer. So in any typical machine learning end-to-end -end project, so these are the main steps to be followed. Look at the big picture. So today we are going to see, look at the big picture. So as per this book, in second chapter itself, we have one, let's say, end-to-end -end project. 
so with that same book we are going to refer and we are going to start with this series so as per the first step the big picture the business objective the prediction of district median housing price based on the existing data of housing prices of different districts with extra other inputs so let's consider some uh, geographical location you have different kinds of districts and each district you have the median housing price based on the existing data and you have other parameters as well population on let's say area of uh, the, the district so different kinds of inputs are available for that and basically we have various inputs and its output right so with this what we need to find is we need to predict the district median housing price okay fine so what is the use for that in later stage this prediction will determine whether it is worth to invest in a particular district or not for the real estate purpose maybe so that would be the benefit for the business so by considering these two points we need to frame our machine learning algorithm hence we have this kind of inputs supervised learning batch learning because we have already the existing data so that's why we have chosen the batch learning supervised learning we have the data with expected output as well so it's a past data so that's why we have just chosen the supervised learning and as you know that it's a linear because the if you see the data you will come to know and multivariate regression model because we have a different kinds of input it's not a single variable a single input and the single expected output and as it confirmed the business need prediction in prices not in classification so that means prices the prices will be in the float value you know that it's a continuous value so that's why we are going with the linear regression not in classification performance measure as root mean square for the model so you know what is root mean square it is just to find the error rate of our prediction so let's say you are drawing some linear regression line so how effective it is by seeing the root mean square error you will come to know how it will behaves for the future data or let's say unseen data overall big picture the same book uh, i just uh, took the snapshot from that so you can consider like upstream components you may not be knowing what is upstream components there may be a upstream components which will be loading the district data and now in our point of view we will have the district data available when we consider when we start the machine learning project so we are getting the district data from available data source then after that this is our component so district pricing we are going to find the district pricing or we are going to predict so after finding that we will keep it into other district prices and in the later stage there is a downstream application will have some other signals and after considering this district prices and other signals they will do the analysis and they will do the real time investments so this is about the overall picture about our ml project solution so now we know that where we are so we are in the district pricing in our point of view we will be getting the district data or existing data we need to do the lot of steps whatever we discussed in the previous slides then after we will be giving the model which will predict the let's say district pricing house median so thanks all thanks for watching and continue your subscription and let's say in next videos we will see how to go with the next steps let's say get the data and how to let's say do the data mining and so on so we will see in the coming videos so thanks all thanks for watching have a great day